All right, guys, welcome back to Intermediate Digital Painting. What we wanted to do is we wanted to take a look at some of the tunnel studies that students are working on. And um, I just want to add just a couple little things to them to enhance them just a little bit. I like to think of this when I do studies, I get them up to about this point, and then I walk away from them, and I come back with a fresh set of eyes. And then I make some real slight changes to them. So um, we have some of Alina's studies here. They came out really nice, and Maddie's also done a really good job with hers. So there's just a couple little things that I wanted to address that we can place in here. So let's start with Maddie's study that's right up here in this uh, the corner right here. Even though it's large, I do like to work on them a little bit smaller like this. It allows me to see the value, and I don't want to get caught up into too much detail. But Maddie has these shadows that are sort of casting down and over this direction. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to get more of a shadow casting over from this tree, sort of coming over a little bit. And since it's in the foreground, um, I can make it a little bit richer or a little bit darker in terms of value. And some of you guys saw me do this before. A great way to check on your work is to bring up the color picker and to say, hey, this is in front of me. What's this value here? And if that's that value and I click back here, that value is a little bit of a jump. I could either darken the value in front of me or lighten up this value of that tree right there because you have to remember the atmospheric perspective that's going to be happening. So if this tree is that dark there, that means I want to darken up some of this tree in the foreground just a little bit because it's closer to me. So I could just take my brush at like 20 or 30 percent and I could just go along here and, and I don't like to just paint the value straight, okay? That's a horrible idea and the reason why that's such a horrible idea is that lights reflecting, excuse me, reflecting and bending all over the place and you, this tip of the tree branch right here, okay, it's going to be a little bit darker and then it might lighten up and then this might be a little bit darker here. So I like getting what I call these little gradients of sort of dark and light. It doesn't have to be one just pure value but I can have it be a little darker in places under the base of that wood or you know maybe right here a little bit there. Okay, and then where the shadow starts to come, now I drop my brush down to about 10%, and then I really start to sort of fade it across like this. Okay, and maybe it even, I can't see the height of that tree, can I? So I can use that to my advantage where that tree might come up here, actually overlap part of this hill right here. Okay, and I could use that, which is sort of cool. Okay, and I don't want to go too dark. And keep that fade in there. Got a little too dark there, so I can go back to my eraser, just take about 10% off of that, okay? Just a couple little passes. So once I get that feel of the tree, then I could come in and I want to subtract some shapes from that to make it feel like it's really part of a, part of a tree um, with light casting through. So I might select some little edges like this. I can hit delete, okay? Now the only thing that sucks about selecting them like this is see I'm getting a very hard edge in there and my shadow if the light was like right there I would get that hard edge but the fact that my light's so much further away I'm not going to have that so what I prefer to do instead of selecting and deleting like that is I come over I go to my eraser and um, after I hit my eraser I go to a fuzzy brush and then I take my fuzzy brush in here and then I just sort of come along with my fuzzy brush at like 40 or 50 percent and just sort of delete some edges Okay, try to just create some little variants in there. Now in here, I might come in here and select some little pockets of light that might be coming through for some of the leaves. Let's say, maybe say there's some little piece here like that. I can hit delete, okay. And then I could come back over that now and I, I need to fade those lines in a little bit. So I just take that value and I just sort of brush around it to get that to, so it's not such a hard crisp edge, okay. All right, so usually, when I come in and I start manipulating some of these adjustments, I'm just blending in edges, trying to get soft edges, hard edges, sort of all blended together so it's not sort of overkill, get the right gradient. But adding that in now is like a little bit of a framing element and I just matched what Maddie had already there. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pepper some highlights in here, okay? And when I, when I, I like that word peppering because I don't want to come in and overkill with tons of highlights. Like I don't want to come in here and just be like, yes, you're all white like that. That might be a little bit too much. But what I can do is I could come in and say, hey, light's coming down in here. I might have, I might be hitting that little corner there 
and then I could sort of fade that off just a little bit and let it sort of just dip off, okay? And then where that light hits there, maybe right here at the base of the ground, I might have a little bit more of a highlight that's hitting there. And then I'm gonna just sort of get that little corner in there. Then I'm gonna just lightly just sort of fade it off with a couple strokes, okay? I might come back in here um, where it's hitting part of that tree. Might hit, have a little bit of light sort of wrap over the base of that tree. Just a teeny bit in there, okay? Maybe a little bit more light up in here. Um, maybe a little bit back here. Just a teeny, not too much, because if I create too much contrast over here on the on the right side of this tree, that'll pull me away from the house, and I want the house to be key. So this is where I bend the rules a little bit, and I might put a little bit more of a highlight there and just sort of fade this a little bit there and fade that in. But I'm still trying to keep this house. There might be light coming on the other side of the house, just sort of defining that shadow out a little bit more. My whole goal is to get that house to pop. That's my center of interest in my story. I'm still sticking to the light, but I don't want to come over here and start putting like, oh yeah, I'm going to have super highlights on that tree because then that's going to pull my eye from what is happening in the center of the composition. However, though, I can come over here and say, hey, you know, I might have like a little 20% grade of white, maybe a little bit of white over here a little bit of white right there, and just leave it sort of simplified. I don't have to go too hardcore. So maybe I have a little bit of white highlight on this edge there, maybe a little bit there. You just sort of keep pushing and pulling these values, okay? Um, one of the last things I wanted to do is that I always wanted to make sure whenever you're dealing with the sky, I told you guys before, skies are not white. They're usually like a light gray because they're blue. But skies do have gradients that take place in them um, because we're on a sphere. And the fact that we look at our atmosphere, okay, and we see that spherical effect of our sky on there, our skies do tend to get a little bit more bluer on the top and then fade down towards the horizon and get a little bit lighter with sometimes like a little bit of a turquoise blue in there. So what I can do is take my brush right now. That gray is the same exact gray as here. Remember, I showed you guys how to use your color picker. You could come in here and check that. It can be like, hey, that gray, it's the same gray. Is that actually, it's a little bit lighter in there. So I might just come along here with, go back to my brushes, and I'm going to grab that fuzzy brush real quick. And I'm just going to pick a, just a, a little bit darker value. Go to 1%, and I'm just going to do a pass or two on it like this, just like this. Just real light. See that? Just lightly going over it. That, and that's it, just a little bit. Look at what I did, just a teeny bit of value up on the top. If I don't like it, I can dull down the opacity a little bit, just like so. So I have a little bit there. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna come back over and just paint a couple clouds behind that barn because the white of the clouds will accentuate the value of the, the darker value right here of that barn, okay? So let me do that real quick. Remember I had that, in one of the brushes I gave you, I um, have that really cool cloud brush. <clears throat> I don't know where it is in mine. Let me see if I can find it real quick. What did Phil do with it is the question. Dove, scratch, stipple. There it is, cloud tree canopy. I discovered that by accident goofing around with some uh, canopy ideas. And I just happened to have white and it worked really nice. Okay, what happened there? I jumped off a layer somehow. There we go come back into brush. So what I'm going to do is I really like this brush for clouds. Um, I'm going to come in with my, with pretty close to like pure white. And I'm just going to start with like a two first because the two can even give me the feel of just in the sky, how moisture transitions from layers. Okay. So just coming like at, at one or two, see if I start going over this, I'm just getting this, this light haze that passes in there, right? And then I could come in here and jump up to like four or five and then really start to punch up a couple little highlights that could be part of that cloud and then offset the size of the brush. And then I really start to get a little bit more of that cloud feel, especially once you get, you work from that light misty cloud and then you come up here, go to like a seven and really punch up a little bit. Now what's happening is that I have that layer of values underneath it, so I'm gonna drop that underneath it, and you see how that cloud just popped? I didn't quite see that because I had just an organizational 
issue with my layer. So I can go to erase 10%, and I'm just going to fade that cloud back down a little bit. I don't want it to be too white, but I want it to be there. So let me go up to about 20%, 30 Lightly erase that. I'm going to go to 100% now. Come on, eraser. Sorry, the recorder makes my jump between tools not work sometimes. I'm going to erase... Um, That's why I jumped. There we go. I'm going to erase that overspray that was over the, the house here, okay, and over the trees. And then I'm going to go back and bring my eraser down to like 10%, and then fade that cloud back down, push it back to the background. This I want to leave a little bit stronger there, and then fade this down a little bit here like that. Like so. So now I just have, you know, just the illusion of the, some clouds there. And when they're on a separate layer, if you don't like them, you can move them around, adjust them how you like. Okay, but I like keeping my highlights like that together. Okay, and so the last thing I might do is I come in with a little tinch on my value level, a little tinch of like little drops of black. Okay, not, not like pretty close to being at about maybe an 80 or 90% gray. So if I take my brush now, I, I could even use the same brush here, and I'm going to go into, I'm at 80% in pure black here, and low watch, I'm just going to come in here very lightly, like a 20, 30 grade, and I'm just going to darken the underside of those rafters. You see that? Just a little bit of value right there. I might come over here where that's hitting, and just darken a little bit under there, a little bit under that side, and just barely touching it a couple times, and then where that shadow's casting right there from this corner, I might put a little bit darker value in there, just a little tinch like that. See that? I just made a little bit of what I call a gradient, just a little richer. And your eyes, and anytime you're doing the rendering, whenever you get these little areas of gradients, dark to light, our eyes love gradations. And as soon as we see those, that's an automatic detail point that we can look at. So if I come back here, look under this part of the overhang of the porch, I'm going to come in here and do this. Just hit it a couple times very lightly. There's going to be a little bit less light in there, so it might be a little bit darker in that shadow. Maybe a little bit behind the wall right there. Okay, a little bit coming off the house right here. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker and then fade it off. Okay, but let me just see if I can show you the difference. See those little values that are in there? Just those little darks in there. They add a lot to punching up. So if I take everything I've done now, combine it on one layer just for that little demo. Just So I've gone over it in 10 minutes. Look at the difference. You see what it did? Okay, that's where I was before. And then just adding in the foreground shadow, a couple little pinches of highlights, the clouds, my eye goes right to the center of that house. Okay, so it's that's that little 5%. I did 10 minutes of work and I have just a little bit more to get that house to pop. Okay, and if I wanted to I, that's the thing I love about Photoshop is being able to come in and just throw some of those little punches on there. I don't want to go too crazy, but, you know, I could come up to the roof and even say, hey, light's coming in this way. You know, maybe I hit a little bit of these roof tiles here just to offset a couple. Okay. I might take that darker value, and I had some shrubbery up there, so I might push the local value of that shrubbery a little bit more. Jump up to like 40% here. And then I might come back with the white and hit a little bit more of that roof in there. Just little corners, just these little teeny adjustments. I might do the same thing on the tree, go up to like 60, and I just sort of do that stipple effect. Let me try about 90 maybe. There, just get some little stipple highlights on that tree edge. You see that? Come over here, I might do a little bit of the same, not too much. Maybe a little bit of reflective light on that corner. A little bit of light maybe coming under here. Okay. Um, a little bit of a highlight maybe hitting this edge and that edge right there. Just these little pushes. And not and again, I always do it on a layer because if I turn it off and on, and then sometimes I realize, oh, they're, they're too much the same. So now I could come into my eraser and at like 10%, and I could cause a little bit more degradation on them. So by erasing a little bit here, I get a softer you know, transition and those little highlight adjustments. But you can still see them there, see that? They're still there, but now with the eraser, I can just sort of, by erasing a couple down, 
I create just a little bit of a, you know, like I said, a, 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 a knockdown in how they're pushing and pulling part of that value structure, okay? So then I combine that together with the other layer, turn that on and off, and you can see the difference. Those little darks, little white adjustments really allow you to push one study just up a couple notches. And just that little 5 percentile, remember I told you, that's where you're competing against other artists and other, you know, um, for a, it might be a job or a portfolio page presentation. Just raising that up really helps, okay? All right, so that was Maddie's. Let's jump over and let's do the same thing over here to Alina. So one of the things I noticed, um, Maddie and Alina both did a really fantastic job. Alina's, she took off the line and look at how it reads. This is just a really great example of how your values hold the image together because now we're not reliant on the line. We could still go back and put a teeny bit of line on there to hold it together, but for most part, the values are holding really well. However, though, I noticed looking at Alina's, I don't really have a pure white in there. See that? She's at like a gray that's at like a 20 or 25 percent. So that's awesome because that allows me to go to pure white and it allows me to come in here and speckle a couple little highlights where I want the eye to look. Okay. Now, I always like to think about, I remember back a long time ago in, um, in a, I had a, a portrait class. It, at a, over at Cal State Fullerton with a, uh, an instructor by the name of Don Lagerberg. And Justin Sweet and I were in that class together. And I remember him talking about the sweet point of your portrait when you're painting somebody's face. And you know what that sweet point was? Anyone? It's the nose. Or it might be the brow right above the eye, okay, where it's, you're right on top of that skeletal brow that's right up here where your eyebrows sit on there or sometimes it might be the tip of the cheekbones, okay? Those three little spots, if you get the right sort of highlight right on them, just a little crisp highlight, that crispness allows your eye to jump right to it. And then especially if you're working in color, you might have some cool shadows on the face, and then by having a warm highlight that's now creating contrast against that cool color creates an immediate pop for the eye. So in terms of value, I could come over here and take a look at one of her studies and I could say, I'm going to take that white and um, come over here. Let me go, um, what brush? Let me use this brush right here. And I'm going to scale this brush down and I might say, hey, she has light casting through right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, starting at like 10% is maybe 20%, where the light's coming through right here, I'm just going to punch up a little bit of that highlight where it's coming through the fence right here. So actually maybe get up to about 20% here. Duh, I'm in the eraser. Why won't it work? Because Phil's still stuck in the eraser like a bonehead. There we go. And that's too bright. But let me just get that in there. Let me lightly sketch that in. There, it's coming through here. I'm going to punch that up a little bit more. Let's go to about 20. And that's why I just have the wrong brush too. There we go. Sorry, guys, I'm making mistakes here. I got the worst sleep last night. I was trying to get caught up, and I had your, my rear biceps femoris on my leg. Your longest, when you, you know, your longest heavy muscle. I did sprints in my son's football practice with him, and I was sleeping at 3 in the morning. My legs went... <laughs> and the muscles cramped, and I like jumped out of bed and couldn't move, right? So I was up for 30 minutes trying to stretch my legs because I couldn't go back to sleep, okay? So look at what I'm doing here. I'm putting a little bit of a highlight, hitting that edge right there, a little bit of a highlight on the tip of that. So I like to think of that as maybe the nose, the chin, a little bit of the upper brow up here. Do you see what I'm getting at? Thinking of that, that analogy or metaphor back to the face, okay? A little bit of a highlight on that edge right there. And then where that shadow's coming in, see I'm just putting a little bit more white there and letting, I'm letting it fade off and into a light degradation where it just dulls down. Might cheat a little bit on that hill. It's getting hit there, just a little bit more. And then I had a little bit here on the barn doors. There, maybe here. 
that edge and then just fade it off very light okay and then she even had some light clouds there that are in the back so now I can come back to those light clouds and I can just say hey I put a little bit more of a highlight on top of that cloud and just bring I mean enlarge the size of my brush here I might bring that cloud out a little bit more so it contrasts against part of that barn I'm not using the cloud brush right now I'm just painting it in real, real rough I might come here put a little bit of a highlight speckled on top of that tree especially against that shadow of the house there it's going to get that to pop okay and then as this light comes towards me I'm just going to fade it off and make it a little bit lighter there's lots of natural gradients in light and shadows and the way everything casts go to 05 or 03 if you really want to get that light casting in there you know sort of lightly and again let's look at the difference okay when I look at that image that I was just working on right there and I go on to off do you see what those little highlights do those highlights get my eye to pop right in on that house okay so that's always sort of a light pass so like I was telling you guys before when I work on my own stuff at home I get my tone to a certain point I walk away take a break to rest my eyes and then I come back and then on a separate layer I sort of come back and then think about where I want the eye to look and I create this nice little area of contrast okay so along with that too remember we talked about the blacks I might come over here and let's take a, a darker value here and I might just very lightly sort of put in just a couple little black hints right under the crisp edge right there okay just very lightly I'm going to go down to 0 05 percent right here under the tip of that guy right there that little edge maybe under this little corner here maybe just a little bit on this edge right here where it's overhanging and there just fade it off or maybe a teeny bit back there and that's it just a little bit and even that's too strong I'm going to lightly paint over it just a little dull it down this is why we call this pushing and pulling of shapes if I want to pull it forward I add a little bit more white if I want to push it back down I come back over with a little bit more gray and I flatten it out so it's not competing against itself so much okay it's like that now when I turn it off and on look at the difference it's those little darks those little lights help that little area pop right there okay so it's it's not that complex it's only maybe three or four or five minutes of work but it's going on and just popping one or two values where you want them to be now what I don't want to do is this and this is what some artists do is because they work on their work too long their eyes get too used to the piece and they don't take a break in between and you come back and you're like all oh, yeah I'm gonna have a highlight here oh I love highlights oh my gosh it's magical it's pulling it out oh now I have to have a highlight here and now I'm gonna have a highlight here oh there should be a highlight on the door oh and this should be on the wood too because highlights are magical and I'm gonna have a highlight here and another highlight there and oh, I have this door here I should have a highlight here and then I'm gonna put oh yeah highlights are awesome another highlight on the cloud and get that to pop and then the highlights on the ground and what happens is if you keep doing this you drown it okay you drown it with highlights and it becomes too much there's a difference between that and that there's a little bit more thought and softness in this and this has a little bit more all the same values too many highlights going across remember highlights are not necessarily just hitting the whole edge they hit little corners little surfaces and you got to think about the surface of the item I mean wood when it gets rained on and weathered it can get really smooth and it might be shiny in one angle and then another piece of the wood might be a thicker grain might have a knot in it and and then it gets a little bit less reflective you know and so that could happen on part of that that barn as well the other thing too when I was looking at Alina's piece here is look at the values of that shadow right close to me and that and look at the values here back on the house same thing so that value of the house right there even though it's further from me is the same value of this tree right in front of me almost identical so it might be in my best interest now to come over here as well and I'm going to take a oops not that let's go to a close to a black here 
I'm going to go down to like 1%. I'm just going to come in here and just throw a little bit darker value on that tree. I might put a little bit more of a haze coming in. I really like the soft brush for the haze because it's the brush is built to get that light little haze in there. And it works pretty good. And then the switch brushes again. Oops. And let's go back over here. And now I'm just going to punch in maybe a little bit more on that shadow. A little bit more on the back side of the tree. Oh, not like that. That was a little bit too much. There. Just hitting it like at a 30%. Okay, I'm just getting a little bit more value built up in there, just really softly, slowly. That's it, just like that. And now when I look at the color picker and I grab that value there, I'm darker here now at that tree base than I am over here at the house. Okay, so let's look at the difference. So I just punched a couple whites and I punched a little bit of the darker value. That's it, just really lightly. And it just creates, you know, I, I look at that and I'm like, dude, that's ready to roll. I can see everything. You know, I'm ready to work on that as a finished render. Okay. So all I wanted to do in this demo, it wasn't going to be a long demo. I just wanted to go over, do a couple paint overs and just show you how I might pull something up a little bit, you know. And, and that's, you, you have to, it, it's like a problem solving technique is you have to ask yourself, you know, always, how do I enhance my composition? If you could think of something that you can put in there, a cloud, a reflection, having areas of contrast against each other. What else can you throw in to your piece that's going to enhance part of your design? And whenever that solution ends up being, you're more, you know, you're more successful. Let's come over here to this one real quick. Um, I'm just going to do the cloud again. So I'm just going to come up here and just go like this real quick. I want a separate layer. And I have pure white. Let's go into like 50%. So let's see where my light's coming from back here. So I might have, I get a nice sort of cloud up here. Get this pretty hot up there. There, just through a little bit of a light cloud. And what's cool is that now I can erase because I don't always get clouds down perfect the first time. Nobody does. You know, cl clouds are vapor and moisture. So they, they drop at certain points. Sometimes they're more reflective in certain areas. It depends on the time of day. Is it rainy? Is it sort of gloomy out? Is it sunny? Have you ever noticed how awesome clouds look when it's raining, but then it's sunny outside? You ever notice that? Like the sun's coming through and it's shining through clouds and when the sun, the sun hits those clouds and there's rain at the same time, it looks really cool because you get, you get a lot of highlights taking place that are um, coming from the reflections of the water and the transition of light and the, and the, and the, grad the gradients that are happening. It's going to knock that cloud in the back down a little bit, knock that guy down just a little bit up there. And then let me come in here with just a darker value. And I'm just going to come a little bit underneath the clouds right there. And that's going to make that white pop immediately. So if I just come in here like this. And hold on a minute. What am I not doing? Brush. There we go. See that? Just that little bit of value. I'm even going to go to 05. Just that little bit of a value right there. Gets that cloud to pop. I'm going to come right here next to the house, put a little bit more of a darker value under part of that cloud. And then I can come back up here and 
but a little bit more softer gradient sort of coming down just like that there and you see how those clouds are now sort of behind the house and it's just a real minor detail but there see how it's just wide open sky and just throwing in those clouds just a little bit like that you know and then again do it on a separate layer copy watch and delete these paste them back in they were right about there and then I could come back and maybe sometimes what I'll do is I drop the opacity just by about 10 or 15 percent to get them to blend in just a little bit okay but adding those little clouds in then with the house now my eye I mean my eye was already going here but now I'm just finessing it with just a couple little bits of information I really enjoy doing this because I think it's an important part of getting those real subtle details that um, we take for granted oops that are really important when we're looking at objects. Get a little bit more white over here. A little bit of white on that end there. Maybe a little bit sort of coming off of this top right here and then a little bit darker where's the dark value there we go that's it I just leave it alone Okay, so here I'll com compress those layers together and then, you know, just take the eraser and dull that down just a little bit more. I put a little bit of reflective light on that little tip hanging out there. I just want to dull it down a little bit, just like that. Just put sort of there. Okay, so I just put a little bit of light on the ground, a little bit hitting up here through the clouds in there, and it really gets it to sort of pop a little bit. Okay. So, you know, go back and look at the other one too. So it's a little adjustment sometimes going on, just adding a teeny bit more of gradients, detail, highlights, little, it's that little 5% tile, you know? And when you jump it up like that, it can really have a huge impact. So I would recommend as you guys pick your last four. Some of you guys were at this problem where I had students that got to a level where they're like, okay, here I am. And then I'm like, well, just go over it added that little 5% more TLC on it. And you get that on there and it makes a huge difference. And then when you figure that out small, now you can transfer that into your larger render that you're gonna do for your portfolio page, okay? All right, have fun guys.